Yeah, we, we, we live in a tough world today. Um, it's with growing technology, with um, social media, our children face um, some really difficult obstacles and difficult hurdles that they have to have to overcome and tied into all of that right this is an age-old um, this is an age-old thing where where folks are always trying to fit in they're always trying to gain acceptance of, of others and with technology with social media that's become even more difficult um, and even more challenging in certain ways and so what we've wanted to teach our children through uh, the convention is that just be true to who you are. Be true to yourself. So what we did was back in 2015, when the overall process started, we actually surveyed Mariks and Marikas, or kids across North America, to get a better sense of the types of challenges and difficulties that they face on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to their satsang, but also when it comes to things such as managing their day-to-day -day responsibilities, how they function in school with their friends and more. And so using the insights that we gathered through those surveys, we were better able to understand uh, the types of difficulties and challenges that they face. My brother, he went to NC13 and I asked him, like, how was it? He said, like, it was the best shea beer I ever had. And then I'm like, and then I wanted to go because he said it was so fun. So when I got off, like, uh, the uh, car that we drove here from, I saw, like, pe so many people. Like, I walked into the hotel and I saw, like, like a lot of people. I'm like, oh, there's so many people. This might be, at, like, a fun place because I get to meet new kids that are my age. the luggage check-in center. What this, what we're doing here is we're taking their luggage, we're putting a, a tag on it, whether if it's going to hotel one, two, or three, depending on where they'll be staying, we tag the bags, then Gadikers take those bags, and we're taking them to the hotel for them. So once they're done with the evening program, they'll be able to collect their baggage at the proper hotel, so now sh shuffling it back and forth. Um, there are a lot of Gadikers that are involved here. We have a luggage team, we have a luggage transfer team, and in that process, we scan each bag with the QR code so they get a notification once we check them in, once we put it in the car, and once we get it to the, the pickup area, they'll get a notification with a text saying it's all ready to go and it's at the right location. Uh, so this is how we're bringing in technology at NC18. We had this app called the Moksh app that was sent out to all the delegates uh, months prior to NC18. Uh, with that app, you have the different, different notifications, different information that's pulled uh, right from your phone, that's sent to your phone through that app. Uh, for example, you have information about the programs, you have information about your luggage, you have information about your registration, even your group, even group leads have information about their groups, uh, way, I mean, well in advance, even the schedules on the Moksh app. Everything you need about NC18 is in that app. Why do we feel it's important to showcase events like these? Because they're different. Because it's positive. It's positive. Uh, I mean, I work in music, and uh, it is positive because you know we create these moments in a concert that everybody just feels inspired and and liberated in their own sense. But this is deeper. Uh, it's it's quieter and it's deeper, and um, there's a lot of weight in the silence. Um, and it was really nice to just have that light and in a dark room with people there for this cause is, is just really lovely to be a part of. Yeah. 10 seconds, all right. Bang video in seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. You're on cue? Okay, perfect, we're on cue. All right. Firstly, I would regret to have not come here because without having been here, I don't think I'd be able to describe this as someone who wasn't here. Does that make sense? It's a lived experience that we've all shared together. And um, the, the sheer, uh, the effort, the teamwork, and the goodwill, you just can't help but get wrapped up into that. So to be part of that, I'm really am honored and proud. 
Walsh is seems like a very big concept that's kind of you can't grasp it basically but seeing the approach of it here and how they break it down and like the practical approaches that you can have to a subject like moksha is amazing and the things the way they're explained are digestible um, the segments and the chapters or uh, episodes like they're called here um, make it really approachable for you know all ages from seven to someone as old as me who's 25. I think there's a sort of a, a misconception sometimes that develops that if you focus if you focus on your mulch you're gonna mix, miss out on things if you focus on your mulch you're not going to be able to achieve um, everything that you're looking for from an earth and gum perspective um, in terms of fulfilling your desires in terms of achieving the academic and the professional um, fulfillment that you're looking for and what we've learned from our gurus is that if you focus on moksha, all of the other things fall into place. And so if you want to sort of take it in, in one sentence, how I've thought about it throughout, throughout my process, throughout my journey of this shibir is I can focus on my earth and my gam so long as I do it within the boundaries of dharma and within the singular purpose and the singular focus of moksha. And that's what we wanted our kids to go away with. I'm doing right now is Tilak Chandra, and the Tilak means Maj's feet, uh, and the red Kumkum no Chandra or uh, dot means us, and that we're uh, protected by our God. I do my jala every day to school, so like uh, every everyone says, what's this red dot on your forehead? So I try to explain it as simple as I can so they can understand it. Well, I've done that before. I've actually taken my thilak jala off before just in like mad, the angriness. I've actually just erased it because I got so angry at some people. I was like, just forget it. I won't do it anymore. But then my parents actually explained that it's our dharma and niyam to actually do our dilak chalo. And then we moved schools. And then this school actually, I've moved to. It's actually way better. They actually don't make fun of me. I explained that how my dilak chalo represents me and my guru and how I'm always with them at every single moment. And I'll put it on every morning. My favorite part of the Shibir is when they talk, the Santos talked about um, to be confident, to be brave, don't back down on things. Because an example, if you're wearing a janlo to school and someone asks you, um, what is it? Some people might get scared because they don't know what making mun on. He was sometimes scared and he, they made fun of him, but you just have to don't back down and tell them what it is, what, why do we do it. and and what is for. Uh, so far, like my favorite part of the convention was when we did the video call with Monsami, it like completely surprised me because I at the beginning I didn't know it was live. So then like when Monsami started talking, then I realized it was live. Uh, my favorite part was when Mansai Maharaj came in his live darshan because that was a complete surprise and it really just made me feel happy because you can feel his love no matter where you are. I love the way how we called Bapa. Bapa said I love you all. Um, look at everyone as a mook. That's how we keep Bapa Raji. And then I also like it how Bapa uh, like, ate a chocolate. We ate a chocolate together and we hugged him. So I and I loved it when he played with us. So by being here in Atlanta and being a part of a group, smaller groups of eight with a group lead, helps you engage and really understand the true messages that the convention is trying to convey. And 
It allows you to have that opportunity to really get to know each other, share your stories, your experiences, and build that one-on-one -on -one connection that you normally don't get to. So a lot of these kids are now about to start middle school or on the years where now peer pressure is actually prevalent in their life. And so many of these kids need a role model or need a mentor to teach them um, or, or to give them scenarios that the mentors have experienced themselves. And so when the kid sees, has a role model like that, who's gone through the same stuff that they're going through or that they're about to go through, it, it really does have an impact on their life. And I'm just trying to be here to have a positive impact on their life. Uh, my favorite part of the convention is the breakout session, which is mostly after the episodes of the drama, where um, we get to discuss as our group, and um, we get to reflect on the lessons that we learned from the drama, and then we have different various activities, so I thought that was really fun. Um, so first, Monon, he was going into a new school, junior high, and then, then like all these new kids, he wanted to try out like different types of things to become friends with more kids, and then, and then all these kids started asking him questions about his Tilak channel, and then he just got too much pressure. He got mad and everything, and then we learned that whenever he gets mad or whatever he's feeling inside his mind, moksha, dharma, gam, and earth all feel that thing. One of the things that I, I think we face as a society, we've seen more and more of it um, from, from a youth perspective, is bullying and even cyberbullying. If you're able to stay true to your values, if you're able to be confident in your own identity, then you're going to be someone who's understanding of, every, of, some, of somebody else's diversity. And in that way, we're going to be able to undercut kind of the roots or the underpinning of that bullying and that cyberbullying. And so that's, that's what we've tried to focus on throughout the convention. Some of the bad things I see at school is like when, when I see a kid get bullying, bullied because like of his religion, I'm, I think to myself, what if that was me in that situation? But I don't get bullied because I, when a kid asks me, yeah, I just explain the whole like look down the purpose and what it's for, so they never ask me again. And I don't get bullied from other people. Yeah, I used to get bullied in third grade because of my like race of my culture, and it's like I've experienced it and I've talk to my parents and you know they're it's like always what they say is like don't listen to them and don't do this but it's like it hurts but you know it, it's like, like some people who love to like bother so just ignore it if you know who you are if you know that I'm a Hindu and it's okay to be Hindu then I don't think that anybody can stop you from doing anything not to be afraid of your culture, and just because your culture is a little different, like your Tila channel, and the food looks different to other people, but you shouldn't be afraid to talk and be who you are. Well, growing up as um, a child um, in the 90s in like Philadelphia and Columbus, Ohio, I didn't really come across any Hindus that were so proud and confident in their identity. So coming to the Mandir and seeing others being able to relay their identity and their customs and traditions, that made me want to become a little bit more confident in who I am because I didn't want to just um, do what everybody else was doing. I wanted to make decisions that were more purposeful and had a reasoning behind it. I think that being a Hindu is like, if you live in America, you can still be a Hindu. And I'm being American, I do things that other Americans do. I play sports, I dance, I sing, I do everything that Americans do. But at the same time, I do do things that Swaminarayans do. I read, I take tests, I go to Saba, I go to Gujarati class, I take classes in Mandir. So it's like, if I'm American, then that doesn't mean I cannot be a Hindu because I can do both.
Sometimes it's easy to think, you, you look at the entire production and you think, wow, they probably had some professional help here. But the truth of the matter is we had a lot of people who are students, um, who are uh, professionals, working jobs, uh, nine to five jobs, proverbially. Um, and all of these folks are taking their evenings, their nights, um, and have spent a lot of time putting together all of this content. Like I said, all original content. So that's a little bit about the programming side. From the logistical end, um, you have transportation, accommodations, um, all of the meals that are being provided. So the kitchen department, uh, you have uh, a luggage experience, if you, if you will. Um, so uh, the, the environment that's here, so the signage, all of that was put together by BAPS volunteers, run by BAPS volunteers. Seen essentially, all actors will exit my side. So episode five, is starting with him throwing the pop dart out. So let's do that. Let's do that. We're almost ready. We're about to start. We have 40, a 49 second video followed by another 55 second video. It's literally gonna be now. We have two minutes, we can nail this. Everybody knows what they're taking? There are volunteers who have spent hours and hours, and, and we're talking years, um, in preparing for this event and this, this entire week um, to host uh, 3,000 plus uh, delegates across three very large hotels in the Atlanta City area. It's, it's not an easy task, and, and the amount of organization in this um, is just incredible. And how much time has been spent to prepare for this, it's, it's nearly flawless. We currently have uh, roughly that 50 to 100 volunteers coming to the Mandir at about 1 a.m. daily and preparing uh, the food first run that comes at 9 a.m. That would be the lunch food that's arriving at 9. So they have a couple hours to get it all together and properly get it ready to serve here. And then we have a 3 p.m. Uh, delivery time here that leaves the Mandir at about 1.45 p.m. 1.50 p.m. so that by 3 p.m. that dinner food is already here and then they can do their uh, preparations. Yeah, so I did follow up with them and they said that we got the stats for them. We got the approximate visits per day. Go, 1871. So we have three meals a day, three, uh, so uh, three times 12,000 meals all together and over 120,000 meals in the whole 10 days to feed about 4,000 people. So just imagine how much manpower is behind that. People waking up at 1 a.m., staying till late, going home at 2 a.m. From here, setting up everything, cleaning, coordinating between here and Monday. There's just a lot of manpower, a lot of cardiacers behind this and it's just amazing feeling when you see these kids eat. Something that we really felt strongly about for this convention was really raising awareness as relates to um, being environmentally friendly and environmentally sound. Um, it's been, if, if you look at any of the signage around the hotel and around the convention, um, you see things such as 
hydrate yourself. You see things about recycling, small little messaging pieces that we could add um, that we think will go a long way in really helping create a sustainable environment, a sustainable world moving forward. And one of the like most amazing things about this convention is that it teaches the delegates just that. They're not here just to gain something that's going to help them in their spiritual growth, but they're also going to gain things here to help them in all different aspects of their life. Like we're teaching the delegates here what it means to eat healthy. So they're going to learn about portion control and how much they should eat of what item. They're gonna learn why they should drink water, like why it's important to stay hydrated. Um, they're gonna learn what it means to be eco-friendly. All of the material that we're using right now for all of the 10 days, for every single meal, everything is biodegradable, every single meal. So these plates that we're using, have a 30-day shelf life. They, they, they are biodegradable. All the cups, all the, all the spoons, all the forks, everything is biodegradable. And we've taken that in mind. You know, and the group lead's role is to be sure to create that open mind, you know, and that open um, concept of like, you know, we are who we are and we just have to be confident with who we are as well. And so some of the material that we've had in our sessions is to let these girls know, or the youths know, that you know we have certain things, certain things that we eat, certain things that we do, certain decisions that we have to make. But we can always make that right decision because in the end, the whole idea is, are we making Samyodachi or not? Uh, one thing is, uh, do your best and leave the rest. Sometimes things happen, and we don't really know what to do. And you just have to try hard and know that Maharaj is gonna take care of everything. And that's one of the big things you need to know to go on the pathway to Moksh. Sometimes in life, the results don't match our expectations. But remember one thing, God knows our past. He got, God knows our present. God knows our future. Whatever He does, is the best for us. Pramukh Swami Maharaj and Mohan Swami Maharaj take care for us. We are their children. Who has you? Okay, you are Swami and Bapa. Who has Swami? Swami, Bapas, Lions, and Lions. Who has Ann? What's this one? Lionesses. Uh, coming to conventions like this, it kind of broadens your horizon. You see so many people having dealt with so many issues and some of the peer pressure issues that they de dealt with. And it kind of gives a lot of our delegates the tools and the know-how of when they go home, how to deal with the same situations. Well, it's good to have friends, but it's not really like good to have think, friends that make you do stuff that you don't want to do. It's actually your choice what you do, and always think about um, if that decision makes Bapadat. In the convention, my name was Manan Vijay Patel, and I played the main character throughout the whole Bal Balika convention. So most kids right now, they're facing the same problems. Um, like when you start a new school, you're going to a different place, you don't know a lot of people. So basically it's just really hard for you to like get used to the people around you. And then when you're asked like different questions about yourself, then it's, sometimes it might be embarrassing or you just don't want to explain it because you just want to be like others. You want to be liked by others. Think little of what others think of you. Think more of what you think of yourself and think most of what our Guru Hari or Swami Bapa thinks of us. So the balancing of dharmas from the perspective of Gam, you can say that people have that perception of Gam that it's always a bad thing. But in this sense, in this whole spectrum of things, thinking about it, that if you want to desire the Rajipo of Swami Shri, Kaam comes into play that I want that Rajipo of Swami Shri. It's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. You're desiring a good thing. Pramukh Swami Mahan Swami Maharadna, Apre Bada Shisha Chie, To Emna Shisha Tarike, Apre Bada Balakoe Kub, Under Under Hari Marine, Premti, 
એકબીજાને આદર આપીને એકબીજાનો મહિમા સમજી અને આપણે વર્તવું જોઈએ Why not now? Because now you're making Swami Baba Raji and you're always going to be in his heart. And so you can go to Akshadam. Why not start now? Why wait later? My favorite part of this convention is Moksha. Because if we start Moksha from childhood, it basically means happiness. So if we start from now, we can use it throughout our whole entire life. Why not right now? I, and why not me? Every one of us has got the Moksha. So, we can get moksha right now why later on if we have found swami papa then obviously all of us have got moksha